we got a real special fig to review for you guys today. This is Neruciola de Elba right here. That's the one that we're going to review. And then also we have Azores Dark right next to it, which we just did a video on. But isn't that crazy how dark that is? It's just nuts. So I'm interested. I opened it up. I opened it up and I said, oh my God, that's so dark. I have to do a video on this fig now. Um, because look, this tree is ripening up. And honestly, it goes from this red stage here. Um, first they're green, then they go red. Once they start going red, to the day that I can then pick them, um, and then the day that they start drying is a very short period of time. I would say only six days, six or seven days, and this thing's already drying on the tree. And I think that's kind of what we have over here is that this fig is now starting to dry. Um, obviously, not anywhere close to the fully dried state, but definitely in a really awesome position here. And this is a fig that I grafted. So that, that over here is on a rootstock. Um, so I think when you graft them on the rootstocks, my personal opinion is that they mature a bit quicker. Um, a lot of times they're a bit more vigorous. They're stronger trees, they're healthier trees. So if I come over here and show you guys my Neruciola de Elba in the ground, this is one right here and you can see it's actually drying up right here on the tree. And uh, this is, like I said, it turns from this green color to then red and then it turns black. Here's actually a red, reddish one right here. So this is day one. Then it turns black, which is maybe actually like this, day two or day three. And then day four, we can actually kind of see it, or day five over there is where it turns fully black. And then back over here is like day six or day seven when this thing's actually drying up on the tree. And uh, it's just a wonderful fig. It really is a really small, very small fig that has the ability to dry on the tree naturally here, which is just an incredible, attribute there's you know not many figs that can do this withstand the moisture here um, you can see it's actually quite productive this was a 10 gallon size pot last year that didn't really well it's not very old the tree is not very old it's, I'm just gonna put it pointed it out we just put it in the ground this spring it put out about 10 Braba believe it or not <laughs> 10 Braba all up and down the main stem here from last year's growth it dropped about seven and I got to eat three of them and they turned out pretty well and I was surprised by the the moisture resistance on these things um, it also seems like a mid-season variety however it comes from the island of Elba in Italy and Elba is not really the coldest place it's quite warm there um, it's an island in the Mediterranean I believe it's just a warm area of Italy so for me to expect that fig to do well here is pretty, pretty wishful thinking, but it has, it does do well here. Um, so I decided let's try it in the ground. It has a repu reputation for being a slower vigor tree, has slower vigor, better for pots. Um, and that slower vigor hopefully can make it so that because it doesn't grow very quickly, the limbs will lignify in time and actually give it some natural hardiness here. Maybe more than other trees that maybe are a bit more vigorous. And that was my thought process. I also thought, you know what, it's, it's definitely a mid-season variety. And it seems more on the earlier side, actually. Because um, today is, we're still not even, I think, today's August 21st. And the thing's ripening in pots, August 21st. That's about mid-season. Maybe a little bit earlier, we could maybe push that in future years. So I would say early to mid-season, and then also, it just seems like a productive tree. So this is one with the moisture resistance. It just seems like a good choice in ground here. And so far it's done well, I have to say, but we'll, the real test will be next spring, next year when this thing has gone, gone through an entire winter. What I'm doing now is I'm actually air layering this. I air layered this in anticipation that this is gonna be a very good fig here for my climate. Um, and so far, looking at the fig we just picked over here, uh, it looks pretty nuts. It looks absolutely ridiculous. So I'm ecstatic right now. I, I want to really taste the flavor because all I've had so far is Brava off of this variety. I want to cut this other one here we just picked that's semi-drying on the tree. It's not 
too shriveled, but you can tell it's definitely, definitely ripe, definitely perfect. And the inside on this one's much more mild. Wow, what a difference. So maybe this is the big difference here, maybe in just microclimates. Maybe uh, it's due to age or the fact that we had grafted this tree. Look at the difference though. That's, that's nuts. That's a beautiful array of figs, by the way, guys. I'm in heaven right now. This is just crazy. All right. I just feel so lucky, to be honest. I feel like I put in the time, the energy to really learn this. And even somebody in my crappy climate for growing figs can eat something as awesome as this. So let's try the more mild one first and see if there's really any different. Sometimes the visual effect on this is more visual and not anything else. But usually the color of the interior really translates well to the flavor. And this one is more mild, so I would say it probably has a less intense berry flavor. It seems quite, jam um, quite syrupy in there. There's a lot of nectar, a lot of honey. That's a good fig. That's a good fig. I would say that is like, that's a really high quality piece of fruit, you know? Um, it doesn't have the exact texture that I'm looking for. The skin actually seems a bit tough, believe it or not, but it's a soft fig. Um, yeah, let's try the other one now that's more dark and perhaps maybe a bit more intense in flavor. Mm. That one's more like it. Both very good though. And I wasn't really, I mean, the visual appeal on this is way better than it tastes. But we'll see. We're going to let more of them ripen, I think, a bit longer. Maybe even just a day. If this one actually had fallen off, has fallen off the tree and I found it on the pot, I've been eyeing it up for days. And I was like, oh my God, where did it go? And here it is. It was, uh, it, it fell off. But this is just nuts. This is crazy how dark that is. The amount of nutrients in this is probably crazy. Like the amount of, um, whatever those things are. You know, I'm talking about when you have darker colors in your fruits. Can't remember the name of that stuff. Anyway, this is an incredible variety, guys. I'm really excited. It's a wonderful fig. It really is. I think I'm gonna have more of them. I think I'm gonna, um, I may even put another air layer on. I think that's wonderful. Um, it's definitely a three out of five. Is it a four out of five? I think it is. I think it is. Here's Azores Dark right next to it. I wanna save this for somebody, so I think we're gonna hold off on that. But that is an incredible, that's really an incredible variety. It, it kind of reminds me a lot of like the, the uh, Violet de Bordeaux types kind of has a similar-ish complexity to it. The berry flavor is not too intense, it's not mild. Somewhere in the middle, I think Villette de Bordeaux is in there as well. And it has a nice complex flavor to it. Great fig, man, that's wonderful. All right guys, that was Neruciola de Elba from Italy, from the island of Elba. It's a very popular variety over there. It's, so if you live in Italy, you live in Europe, you can definitely get this fig. Just contact some Italian nurseries um, and I'm sure one of them is gonna have it. All right, everyone. Take care, we'll see you all soon, all right? See you for tomorrow's video.